Hey everybody, welcome to the second video in the squat series. If you haven't already watched the first one, stop this one, go watch the other one. It's very important you understand the concept of active range of motion. So the next thing I'm gonna show you, we're gonna walk into, we're gonna look at your feet. So the foot is the contact point with the ground. Every time you take a step, there's a chain reaction that happens up your entire body. So if you're not getting the proper gait cycle, or if you're not getting the proper foot position when you squat, it can definitively throw off the hip position. It can be usually the biggest cause of knee pain from what I see, and often a cause of back pain as well. So when Will started training with me, his, his foot was very flat. His, his arch had sunk it in. And if you just like do that again, Will, keep in that arch. You see what happens to his knee? So go back to the, out, oh, now. So his knee cap kind of points out, now drop him in his kneecap dumps in. So he gets this internal rotation at the hips and the kneecap dumps in. So if your foot is moving during a squat, it's gonna start uh, getting that knee to go outside of a hinge position. So it's very important that whatever position you choose at the bottom of a squat, it remains stable, it doesn't move around. And ideally, we, we emphasize that arch. We really wanna have a nice big arch. So we shift the weight on the outside of our feet. So well, what will we do? We're gonna pull our toes up and really think about driving the ball of your foot into the ground. So he's trying to emphasize that arch just really trying to push into it and shift the weight on the outside of your foot good so now that should be your starting position from the foot so if that can the reason being it's gonna we're gonna prevent you from coming into internal rotation in your hip if you're internally rotating at your hip what usually happens is your knees will cave in the hips will lock you'll get lock in the front of the hip flexor and then your lower back will start to hurt either now or eventually so paying attention to your feet is a huge thing so here's a few more tips when it comes to the feet I like to pull my toes up really the whole time. I'm gonna shift between three points of contact. So you've got the ball of the foot here, you've got the outside of the foot here, and you've got the heel. So I'm really trying to have equal uh, distribution between those three points. So if you're looking at my feet, if I just have, if I just pull my toes up, it looks like I'm just going straight. And then if I make three equal con contact points, it's almost like an external rotation that actually happens at my hip joint. So that's a really important thing to acknowledge. We're gonna see that externally rotated hip, and we're just gonna sit between our feet. That's a really simple way. As long as your feet are maintaining that stable, strong posture, typically you're, you'll have a much more uh, enjoyable experience with less knee pain, less hip pain. So strong feet matters. If you're someone who has knee pain or hip pain or lower back pain, oftentimes the root cause is right there at the base of your body at the feet. So Will, show me what a squat looks like, pulling your toes up, going a little wider. Yep. Good, so Will's, what, how this would manifest if you're a coach or even for yourself, if his foot dumps in, go ahead and dump your foot in, see what happens to his knees. They'll really start moving in. So as a coach or as a trainer, I'm looking to make sure his knees are in no way traveling in this direction at all while he's squatting. Go ahead. It's just literally meant to go up and down like a hinge, do a few reps. So I'm just watching to see that little instability right there. If you look really closely, go ahead and do that again. If you look really closely, there, there's a wobble. See how it's wobbling right there? There's a little bit of a wobble. Now that's me being super picky, but that's what you're looking at. So that wobble is usually oftentimes a result of the foot being unstable and trying to dump in, or maybe it's the hip being unstable in some cases, but in this case, I know Will, it's his feet. Um, so we're really gonna emphasize, especially in his warm-up sets, get really strong in your feet and try not to let those knees wobble, right? So by watching me do it, there's very little wobble. There's a little bit, there's very little wobble. So I know I have relatively strong feet because I intentionally train them literally every day, whether it be with yoga or when I'm walking. I'm very conscious of spreading my toes, getting strong foot musculature, and walking with a proper gait cycle to strengthen my feet. I spend a lot of time barefoot, so my, my feet are definitely not a weak link in the chain, and you should aim to make yours less weak, or at least a strength, or at best a strength, to prevent that knee and hip pain when you're squatting.